YouTube video. Introduction to MUDs and how to play. What is a MUD? Yeah, what is a MUD? Let's do a search. A MUD, short for multi-user dungeon, is a multiplayer real-time virtual world. Usually text-based or storyboarded. MUDs combine elements of role-playing games, hack and slash, player versus player, interactive fiction, and online chat. Is it like RuneScape, Guild Wars 2 and World of Warcraft? Similar concept. You start as a newbie with virtually no skills, no money, no equipment with the aim to get bigger and have fun along the way. I'm very interested. How do I play? First of all we want to find a MUD with lots of players. A large community can help you level quicker and get better equipment. According to Google search, here are some of the best MUDs. I'm going to try a Kaya MUD. Let's check the ranking on top MUD sites. Akea Mud is at number 2. Ardwolf Mud is at number 1 and Disc World at number 3. How come Ardwolf Mud wasn't shown on the previous page? Not sure, but we are going to try the top 3 mods in this video. Mud name. Akea Dreams of Divine Land. Location. USA. World size. Gigantic, over 20,000 rooms. Player killing. Restricted player killing. Category. Medieval fantasy. Year created. 1997. Let's go to the website by clicking the link. This is the Akea website. Feel free to explore. Looks like we can play from the internet browser. You can check out the menu. When you're ready, click on play now. Create new character or login if you have already made a character. There are 14 races to choose from. We will go through two races in full detail. Feel free to explore the other races that are available. Human. Dwarf. Solar. Mun. Troll. Rajamala. Rajamala, Tiger Men. The Rajamala are a race of proud, fierce, tiger like humanoids from a distant planet. The first that history speaks of the Rajamala is when they fought with the Triumvirate, under the command of the god Agathius, during the Great Battle on Nishnatabar. Their origins are not known. They mingle easily with the other races and seldom form communities of their own, though one village in the valley of Xhaden Dale is comprised mostly of Rajamala. Orange fur with black stripes is the traditional coloring of Rajamala, but many have coats that mimic that of other felines, tawny and golden, white, black, silver, and more. They may also be spotted or striped in many combinations. Rajamala stand six feet tall on average, with a sleek or muscular physique that seldom becomes overweight. Their eyes are often amber or yellow and brown, but they can be blue and green and black as well. They are born with tails, and some have manes and whiskers that can be styled like human hair. Race bonuses Can consume the corpses of fallen foes. Additional chance to dodge attacks. Resistant to cold damage. Atavian Zoran Grook Hawkvow Satter Sora, 
Siren. Sirens are a race of beautiful females who are not only easy on the eyes, but possess the magical ability to seduce men, so that the men will not hurt them. Like satyrs, children born of a siren may be either a siren or the race of the father. Similar in most ways to humans, sirens' unblemished skin, luxurious hair, and captivating eyes can range in hue from very dark to very pale, and anything in between. Most often they possess a voluptuous body, heavy-lidded eyes, and full or pouty lips, but as the idea of beauty varies from place to place, so does the range of features become more varied than any of the other mortal races. Race bonuses. Resistant to poison damage. Have the ability to seduce and beguile. Tashla. Fayyad. I'm going to select Rajamala. The next step is to select class. There are 21 classes to choose from. We will go through two classes in detail. The Alchemists. The Apostates. The Bards. The Blade Masters. Famously displayed in centuries past by a great foreign hero, the ancient skills of the Blade Master were lost to history, but rediscovered in the modern age. Encompassing mastery of sword and self, these agile swordsmen strike as the wind, outrun the rain, and can cut a circle of death through the bloodiest battlefield or darkest alleyway. Originating from the distant nation of Kashar, the two arts and their companion martial practices came to the shores of sapience with the mercenary Lucane pyramids. Rising to spectacular prominence in the succession wars of the troubled Seleucarian Empire, he fought for the beleaguered empress, cutting a swath through enemy forces to turn many a battle with the impossible precision of his weapon, three moons. The sellsword turned hero met an untimely fate, and his ways and knowledge were lost alongside his fabled blade. Centuries later, Questing Kashari marauders on a mission of pursuit set about a series of events that saw the hero's sword rediscovered and the way of the sheathed blade returned. Now shared with those who would learn by the Hathian maiden Kavair, descendant of the bloodline of Lu Kain, the path of the blade master is one of physical training, mental discipline, and supreme combative prowess. Unarmed, a blade master is a formidable opponent, well versed in the vulnerabilities and pressure points that can leave a foe reeling and helpless. With his sword at his side, each one bearing a name unique to its wielder, a blademaster is a force of death. Drawing and resheathing their blade with each attack, swift slashes accompanied by precise, unarmed strikes, a blademaster's furious onslaught is further strengthened through the Shin trance. Concentrating the rhythm and pulse of battle, Shindo permits terrific feats of might and power. The skills of a blademaster are two arts, striking, and Shindo. A fledgling of the class will learn two arts and striking. Shindo is learned upon embracing the class. The Depths Wakas The Druids The Infernals The Jesters The Magis. The Monks. The Occultists. The Paladins. Much like their bloodsworn priests, the Way of the Paladin is an ancient one. Born in the era of founding by Amethia's rite of ending at the funeral of Pasiphae, they stood as guardians of good upon Achaea from the very founding of the now fallen church. Warrior, warden, and protector, under the name of Templar, the paladins carried the torch of light and fire for centuries across the face of Achaea and beyond in a vigil both unending and unceasing. Though the church and the city of Shalom have long since sunk beneath the waves of the Usian, the might of the paladins persists in service to the divines Aurora and Deucalion. 
In the furnace of battle, they are forged and tested, iron will joined as one to steel armored muscle, in order that no foe might best them and defile their sacred charge. Their mind and body proof against the profane, neither chaos nor evil nor darkness dares blight the passage of a true paladin, their coming presaged by the clarion call of the golden eagle that is their herald. They are the world's bulwark against the horror. They are the defenders of creation, and its last hope against the beyond. The skills of a paladin are valor, excision, and weapon mastery. A fledgling paladin gains weapon mastery and excision, while valor is gained upon embracing class. Be warned that if a paladin turns against the city of Targasas and the Bloodsworn Divine, they can be excommunicated and lose the ability to use excision. Thus, this class requires role-playing and may not be for everyone. The Pariahs The Priests The Scions The Rune Wardens The Sentinels The Serpents The Shamans The Sylvians The Anemibus I'm going to choose Paladin as the class. Looks like we can only choose Targossas as the city. Targossas, the Dawn Spear. Your class can only join the city of Targossas, the Dawn Spear. Located on the eastern coast of Sapiens, the island province of Targossas is a sprawling municipality for the followers of good. Founded by the divine will of Aurora, goddess of light and Deucalion, the righteous fire, the Dawn Spear stands as a guiding beacon to those who would fight for the advancement of creation. Targossus was founded in the year 618 AF, when the bloodsworn gods drove the sword of Dunamis deep into the belly of the southern Zaffir River, inexorably altering its flow and creating a new river. Along its course, the newly formed Silvervale gathered islands into its midst, these isles now comprise the glorious Dawn Spear. In the year 623, Targossus took its place among the other powers of Sapiens as an official city-state. Governed by the divine appointed Dawn Lord and Council of Lumax, the city now welcomes the most pious of Achaeans into its fold. Scholars and warriors alike may find a home in the Dawn Spear, among those who vow to uphold the ideals of good, light, and righteousness. Input your character name, then password and follow the steps on the screen. This is Achaea Mud played on the Firefox browser. An old man in dirty gray robes says, Ah, you're awake at last. Been trying to rouse you for an hour. Thought maybe you were dead. Well, time to get you started don't you think? Have a look around. Look. You're in a dungeon, see? We've been captured by pygmies. They're probably going to eat us. Well, you, at least. Oh, and they like their meals still writhing, so believe me. This is a fate best avoided. Want to get out of here? Say yes of course. Say no, maybe pygmies aren't so bad. Tip. You can either click the answer or type say yes, say no or to select one of the choices. Say, say yes. Yes. An old man in dirty gray robes cackles insanely to himself. An old man in dirty gray robes furtively slips you a small, rusted iron key. Good, good. Here's a key to the cell door. Take it. INV. Go ahead, go ahead. That door isn't going to unlock itself. The door is to the northwest of us. Unlock door northwest. 
you unlock the cell door using your key, which then breaks and remains in the lock. Guards. Guards. He's trying to escape. The old man gives you one last knowing smile before vanishing into the air itself. A sudden blustery wind whips up from nowhere and blows you out of the cell. You look around in near panic realizing you have no idea where you are, or how to get out. You hear a swift patter of footsteps in the darkness. In the next instant, a bloodthirsty pygmy appears before you, and you're fighting for your life. Fight back. You'll never talk your way out of this. Kick. You cock your leg back and thrust out a kick at the vicious little pygmy, nearly breaking his thigh in two with a kick. With staggering you blow. You cock your leg back and thrust out a kick at the vicious little pygmy, nearly breaking his thigh in two with a with staggering blow. Good job. You survived the first pygmy but others are on the way. Look. Southeast. The cell door has been locked from the other side. West. With the completion of your adventure, you feel your renown grow to new heights. You gain 50 renown. Kick. You cock your leg back and thrust out a kick at the vicious little pygmy, nearly breaking his thigh in two with a kick. with staggering blow. You cock your leg back and thrust out a kick at the vicious little pygmy, nearly breaking his thigh in two with a with Punch. staggering blow. Punch. Uh oh. Punch. Your health you is low. You're getting close guard, to dying. Retrieving the corpse. You spin around punch. and throw a well armed punch directly punch. at the little vicious pygmy's kick. face, landing a glancing blow to the cheek. You have slain a pygmy guard, retrieving you the corpse. You cock your leg back and thrust out a kick at the kick. vicious little pygmy, slamming your foot kick. down on his ankle. A pygmy guard bashes kick. you over the head with a big wooden kick. club. The troll looks you at you approvingly and guard. says, kick. Nice work, the Tanker T. We made a good team in there. Letting her spiritual mace dissipate, the dwarf says. I'm Orina Sarithvan, priestess of Targasas, the Dawn Spear. Your home city as well, I believe. Bowing formally, the troll adds. I am Sir Gaheris Lighthawk. Paladin of noble Targasas. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Let's get out of here. You're lucky we happen to be in the area and heard you the take commotion. take a drink from an oaken vial. Follow me. The elixir You may drink another health or mana elixir. You Sip take health. a drink from an oaken vial. The elixir Hurry up heals there, and soothes you. Follow Orina so we can get going. Sip you take health. a drink from an oaken vial. Hurry up there, the elixir tea. heals and soothes you. Follow Orina so we can get you going. You may ask for another health or mana elixir. Follow Orina. Orina quickly leads the way forward, followed closely by her guardian angel. You follow Orina through a grimy passageway. You follow Orina along a secret passageway to a You follow Orina to a candlelit Defend chamber. Defend yourself. Shifting his balance, a pygmy guard thrusts out his Punch. foot in a solid kick to your shin. Aurina bows her head and her guardian angel begins to glow Punch. brightly. You have slain a pygmy guard, retrieving the Punch. corpse. You spin around and throw a well-armed punch. punch directly there are no pygmies at the little left vicious to punch. pygmy's face landing a glancing blow to the cheek. Congratulations you have reached level 3. I think that's the last of them. We should press on. Ah, yes. Look, those pygmies dropped some gold on the ground. Look. Get gold. You don't want to drop your gold like that pygmy did, so be sure to put gold, gold in pack. Sovereigns. Put gold in pack. You put 500 gold sovereigns in a canvas backpack. Info here. Wait a moment. Tanka T can't be just relying on healing elixirs. Let's get him a boar tattoo. Let's explain about tattoos next. Tanka T, in Ikea, tattoos are a magical and important part of life. The boar tattoo is one of the most crucial tattoos as it helps to gradually heal you over time. Would you like me to ink a boar tattoo Say on yes, you? Say yes, please. Say no. I don't like healing and Say prefer yes. dying. Yes. Where would you like me to put the tattoo? 
It doesn't matter much, just choose one. Say right arm. Right This arm. won't take long. And don't embarrass yourself by screaming. It's magical. There's no needle. Arena gets out some purple and red inks and concentrates. Quickly, a boar tattoo is formed on your right arm. Now, just touch boar, and for a while, your health will slowly but automatically recover. Touch boar. The vitality of the black boar begins to flow through you. Congratulations you have reached level 4. Help tattoos. Say I noticed your health vial is basically empty. If you give the vial to me, I can refill it for you. Give vial to Arena. Arena Sarathon quickly refills the vial with health elixir and gives it back to you. You fought well with the basic attacks back there, Tanker T. But you're a paladin, if a new one. You have options. Let's get you a new ability to learn. I'm going to teach you a basic lesson in weapon mastery that you can use in combat. The Harris Lighthawk offers to teach you weapon mastery. Learn 15 weapon mastery As you gain from more levels you will obtain lessons which you may use to advance your skills further and gain new abilities. A B weapon mastery. To break it down for you. Each class has access to three skills, and each skill is made up of many abilities. Usually somewhere between 15 and 50. Tip. Abilities that show up in darker colors are ones that you have yet to learn. For a paladin like you, the best kind of attack to use is sword play. AB Weapon Mastery Sword Play. Geharis Lighthawk passes you a short sword. As a paladin, sword. you'll use bladed weapons like the short sword. Make sure you wield sword and then you have a number of attacks available to you, from a jab to a swing. Wield sword. You start to wield a training short sword in your left hand. Right. Now. There's a job to be done here, Tanko T. And you're the one to do it. The kidnapping of our citizens has been happening regularly lately, and we have to put a stop to it. Indeed, but we believe there's more to it than meets the eye. Beku, the pygmy chieftain, is a complete buffoon. Someone else must be controlling him behind the scenes. You need to find Biku and beat him into submission. Force him to tell you what's being done with the adventurers they kidnap. This is going to be a mission for you and you alone, though, Orina and I have business nearby. Tip. You're about to enter the real Akeya. Where you may encounter other players and where you can go and do things as you like. Help Renown. To learn more about the world, we have given you a number of tasks to complete. You can work on those at your own pace and when you're done we'll see you again. Tasks You may do the tasks in any order you wish, but don't forget about Be Cool. He should be priority number one. We'll see you soon. Geharis Lighthawk and Orena Sarathvan stride confidently away, leaving you to forge your own path through the world. Congratulations you have completed the Pygmy Dungeons and now enter Akia proper. We will continue our journey on Akia Mud in another Tank OT video. Let's move on to Ardwolf, the number one mud in the world according to top mud sites.
Mud name. Ardwolf mud. Location. USA. World size. Gigantic. Over 20,000 rooms. Player killing. Restricted player killing. Category. Medieval fantasy. Year created. 1996. Let's go to the website. Feel free to browse the website. We're going to check the available races and cover two of them in detail. There are 19 races to choose from. Human Dwarf Elf Giant Halfling Troll Trolls are 5 to 10 feet tall humanoids with brownish-green scaly skin. They are natural warriors and rangers due to their massive strength, but tend to have difficulty with the magical classes. Trolls have the remarkable ability to regenerate and heal wounds much faster than any other race. This ability does not work against fire and acid-based attacks, thus trolls fear most magic users. Starting stats. Strength. 15. Intelligence. 11. Wisdom. 11. Dexterity. 13. Constitution. 15. Luck. 12. Trolls are vulnerable to acid and fire, but are resistant to slash pierce and bash. They have natural ability to regenerate, detect hidden, bash and kick. Sprite Quickling Half Griffin Duck Elf Centaur Vampire Vampires are a well-known legend in other worlds, but, in Ardwolf, they are very real and very dangerous creatures of the shadows. Vampires are extremely vulnerable to fire and holy based attacks, but due to their supreme mental powers, they are resistant to mental and negative attacks. A vampire will heal much faster in darkness, but will have a hard time healing outside during sunlight hours. While vampires start out relatively weak their ability to grow is generally higher than most races, and they can become formidable entities in any profession. Vampires are able to strike fear into the hearts of most creatures, can consume the corpses of their victims for regeneration, and do not suffer from thirst. Starting Stats Strength 12 Intelligence 11 Wisdom 11 Dexterity 12. Constitution. 11. Luck. 15. Vampires have a natural ability to fly. Can consume corpses, detect invisible things and can see in the dark. Wolfen. Rattling. Diva. Shadow. Triton. Lizard. Eldar. Let's check the classes that are available on Ardwolf Mud. There are seven classes to choose from. We'll cover two of them in detail. Warrior Warriors are the battle-hardened veterans of combat in the world of Ardwolf. They are the men and women who use brute force and battle cunning to defeat their foes and attain victory. A warrior's creed is fight hard and die young. Warriors are skilled in all forms of combat with all known weapons and through their growth they obtain knowledge of their foes allowing them to strike more often and with more deadly accuracy. If you are looking for the type of character who will hack and slash his way through any problems that should arise a warrior is for you. The primary stat for a warrior is strength, and preferred weapon is sword. Let's check the skills and spells. We're going to cover some of the skills that people may be familiar with. Level 1 we get sword and parry. A few levels later we get skills in using other weapons. We get enhanced damage at level 6 and second attack at level 8. 
There's dodge at level 17 and dual wield at level 32. There's third attack at level 37. We got trip at level 39 and berserk at level 58. We got fourth attack at level 65 and fifth attack at level 101. There's second attack duel at level 124 and third attack duel at level 157. Let's move on to the next class. Thief Mage Mages are the masters of the arcane. They have the knowledge of how to harness the magic which exists in the world of Ardwolf and bend it to their will. Mages are perhaps one of the most diverse classes of Ardwolf as through magic they can dish out destructive forces beyond a warrior's wildest dreams, travel in a second to the far reaches of the world, or even conjure force protective wards to protect themselves and their allies from harm. The knowledge of how to harness magic does come at a price however, a mage spends most of their time studying from books and scrolls, and spends little time developing themselves in the art of physical combat. This they make poor armed combatants. Their magical abilities greatly defeat this weakness as they advance in knowledge and levels making for perhaps the most powerful characters in the game. The primary stat for a mage is intelligence and the preferred weapon is dagger. Let's check out the spells. At level 1 we got dagger, and blink, this is similar to dodge, to help the mage avoid attacks. There's continual light at level 5, very useful for dark rooms and nighttime. We got banshee whale at level 17, an attack spell. We got Meditation at level 22, this is to regenerate mana quicker. There's also Invisibility at level 25. There's Fireball at level 38 and we got Enchant Weapon at level 50. We got Teleport at level 64 and Lightning Breath at level 113. Beware when casting this, it's an area spell meaning it will hit every killable monster in that room and they will all attack you. There's Balefire, an attack spell, at level 137, and Lightspeed at level 140, this gives you an extra melee attack. At level 191 is Immolate. This is a high level high damage fire attack spell and there are some level 201 spells that all superheroes get. Cleric Paladin. Looks like we skipped rangers there, oopsie. Psionic. I'm going to download a mod client to make it easier for me to do things. Google search best mod client. A mod client can improve your modding experience. Download mush client. Click on the download link and save file. Once download is complete, click on the exe file to install. If you agree to the license agreement click the appropriate selection. Click on install. Next. Then finish. Click yes to launch Mush Client now. Click on File, New World. Type in Ardwolf in the world name box. Put in ardwolf.org for the address. Port 4000. Select Save on Exit and click OK.
Maximize the screen. Type in your character name and password. Select your class. Select subclass. I'm going to be a soldier. Mainly for the precision skill, plus battle tactics and dual wield weapons regardless of weight. Select race. I'm going to select vampire. This is probably the most popular race nowadays. Select gender. Email is optional. Next up is to select how experienced you are with modding. AdWolf will customize settings suitable to you. I chose three. Experienced AdWolf player. We've finished character creation. We will now enter AdWolf mod. This is the starting room for all new players. Just one south of the academy. Currently there is double experience and double quest points to celebrate New Year. There are special occasions when bonuses are run and it is a joy to players. Welcome Ksu. We are seeking new adventurers to enlist in the academy. Our training prepares you for life outside the safety of the city walls and introduces you to many aspects of our world that you might otherwise miss. The academy rewards success and it is made worth your while to complete our training. If you wish to join, please type enlist now. If you prefer to explore by yourself feel free to return later. If you decide not to enlist, read Help New Help and browse the guide in your inventory to get started. Enlist. Great Xu. Ready for your first lesson? Head north through the courtyard when you are ready to begin. Say yes. You say. Yes. North. Academy Courtyard. North. Academy Courtyard Fountain. North. Before the main entrance. North. Academy main entrance. North. Greetings, Kshu. Type find all for a class directory. Say greetings. You say. Greetings. Find all. Find basic. Run west. Welcome, Kshu. Please type start when you are ready to start your basic training. Start. Before we begin if you would like to change the speed of my lessons, type faster or slower. You have many lessons to learn, Kshu. You do not have to complete them all at once. You may leave and return at any time to continue your lessons. There is a small test at the end of most lessons. If you already know Ardwulf and would like to skip straight to the quiz you can type quiz at any time. I will teach you the basics you need to be able to continue your training through the academy and interact with Ardwulf. We will cover how to move around our world as well as how to find help and advice from others. Then we'll cover the basics of your stats. When we are done, I will ask you a few questions and reward correct answers. If you would like to hear all of my lessons again before starting the test, you can type restart to start over. Typing repeat will repeat your last lesson only. Type next when you are ready to begin or repeat to see this information again. Next. I am about to teach you how to find help during your adventures please listen carefully. Ardwolf contains an extensive help system. Most command skills spells and features in the game have detailed help files containing everything you need to know. You can view a summary of help files using the index command. To see a list of all help files in a category, use the contents command. Typing contents by itself will show a list of the help categories. You may also search help files using help search text. Make a note of this one, as you will need it for your test at the end. Please type help kill right now to see an example, then I shall continue your lesson. Help kill. Well done, Kshu. Take a few seconds to review the help file before we continue. If you ever can't find the information you need in the help files, or just have a general question, you can ask on the newbie channel. To speak on the channel, type newbie your message. 
Please try that now. Type newbie hi, I am doing the academy, to introduce yourself, then we can continue. Noob hi, I am doing the academy. Finally, if you need further help understanding the game, you can ask a helper. Helpers are experienced Ardwolf adventurers who have volunteered their time to help newcomers. This completes our lesson on getting help in Ardwolf. The most important concept is that almost everything has a help file. If you see a term or command you do not recognize, chances are there is a help file already written on it. Please next. type next when you are ready to learn about moving around Andala. The Ardwolf game Whoa. movement around Andala is based on the directions north, east, south, west, up and down. You see the exits in your room displayed whenever you move, or whenever you type look. To see more details on the exits, type exits. You will learn more about movement in navigation training. For now, the most important things for you to know are the six standard movement. From anywhere in the Academy or Ayla, our main city, Typing Recall takes you to the Grand Temple of Ayla. From there, move up then move north to return to the Academy entrance. Recall works from most other areas and rooms in Andala. If you already understand basic movement, you will find the Run Run To, Speed Walk and Find Commands of Interest. This completes our lesson on basic movement. Please type next when you are ready to learn about tracking your Academy progress. Next. Let's continue with some basic school administration and how to track your progress through the academy. Typing the following commands will help you track progress. Type goals to view all no goals and whether or not you have completed them. To see goal details and known tasks within a specific goal, type goals goal name. To see all outstanding tasks within any goal, just type the command tasks. Please type goals academy now to review your open tasks so far. Goals Academy well done, Kshu. Take some time to study your goal description and task list. Type next when you are ready to move on. We have completed task 1. In list. We are currently on task 2 to trying to complete basic training. Next. Let's move on to review your stats. Type score now to see some important information about your character. Score How come you have current strength 24, much higher than your base strength 17? I believe they provide automatic equipment upon creation that adds stats. That's right. Ardwolf gives worn and wielded equipment that adds stats and also bonuses to a skill or more for newly created adventurers. We have 160 hit points and 150 mana and 400 gold. You can gain hit points and mana by leveling. Tanko T has given a guide on that. Feel free to browse the channel to find the video. How do I get more gold? That'll be covered in the economics lesson. Look out for a big surprise, actually a few million surprises. Next. The score card shows your stats in the top left corner. Your stats are very important in how you play your character, so we shall review each one in turn. Strength determines how hard you hit during combat, the amount of equipment you can carry and affects most physical abilities. Dexterity helps you avoid attacks, determines how often you attack during combat and affects many skills, particularly those used by thieves. Intelligence increases your magical attacks, affects how quickly you learn new abilities, helps you avoid harmful effects and determines how much mana you will gain with each level increase. Wisdom increases the damage and healing ability of cleric and ranger spells, determines the amount of protection you receive from spells such as sanctuary, and affects the number of practice sessions you will receive with each level increase. Constitution reduces damage taken overall, determines your hit point gain when you increase in level and is important for most warrior abilities. Luck is the primary stat for nothing, but affects almost every ability to a lesser degree. Training luck is recommended as you increase in level but can be left until later for all classes except Zion assists. As a warrior, strength and constitution are your most important stats. Note that no stat should be ignored completely as they all have an important role to play. To see a reminder of what each stat does type help stats. Each stat also has its own help file containing more details. I will give you some time to take that all in. Please type next when you are ready to move on. Next. 
Let's move on to how you increase your stats. You can train your stats here or in your guild room whenever you have training sessions available. Your cost to train in each stat is determined by the amount you already have in the stat and your race. See Help Train for more information on training stats. Please type Train now to view your training costs. Train. Excellent. To train your stats here, use Train Stat. Type Next when you are ready to move on. We can see that a vampire has reduction in training cost for strength and intelligence, but penalty for wisdom and luck. Train strength. You can repeat command by pressing enter. Next. Your basic training lessons are now complete. Let's review your progress with a few questions. I will reward 50 experience points for each correct answer. You can repeat a question by typing repeat. We will let our warrior complete the quiz. Let's move on to the reward. That is correct, Kshu. You have now completed basic training. Well done. Your next lesson is in magic and skills which you can find to the east of here. Reminder that you can type goals academy to see your progress and assigned tasks. Bow. You bow deeply. Goals Academy. We have completed task 1 and 2 and open task 3. We'll rush through the next few lessons. East. Greetings, Ksu. Type find all for a class directory. Welcome, Ksu. Please type start when you are ready to start your skills training. We're going to rush through the lessons as we now have an understanding of how lessons work. This is the skills lesson where we learn how to practice skills as spells and how to use them. Start. Next. Skills. Here are the warrior skills at level 1. We have dodge, kick, sword, to name a few. Wow, we have intimidated 100%. It is a racial bonus for vampires. Makes the enemy run away, doesn't always work though especially if the opponent is higher level or has better stats. Next. Help spells. Next. Learned. Wow, we start with 90% sword and there's plus 2 in brackets. Bonuses to skills can be from your worn and wielded equipment. Practice dodge. Practice kick. Practice parry. Practice. Practice recall. Next. You still have three practices. Don't you want to use them for exotic weapons? Not really. I'm fine with the sword skill and feel that there are lots of swords at higher levels. Show spell magic missile. Let's go down and practice. Down from Vorth, there are lots of mobs and good equipment. It is recommended that you have no EXP on so that you don't gain too many levels while being a newbie. Next. Effects. There are some good spells that add stats, armor as well as hit roll and damage roll. Look Blackboard. We will let our warrior do the quiz. Let us move on to the reward. West. North. North. West. Ready for some action? Please type start when you are ready to start your combat training. Commander Dar will be giving training on combat. If you complete the mission in this lesson, there is a nice reward. Start. I noticed Daily Blessing came up on screen. What's that about? We are going to see that soon. Let's take the mission from Commander Da first. My assignment will test your abilities to find an area, find the monsters in that area, and kill them. You will also be performing a great service to the wildlife of one of our most beautiful forests. I will give you 5,000 gold coins and a nice piece of equipment if you complete this assignment for me. If you want to hear my lessons again, now is the last chance to restart. 
Once you complete my assignment, you will be, be unable to restart the lessons. Please type or say accept if you want to take this assignment. You can leave and start the assignment later if you would prefer. Accept. The beautiful forest of Lignesh is at risk from a sudden increase in the viper population. Your assignment is to travel to the forest of Lignesh and kill the vipers until you find a viper skin. Return the skin to me so that the academy researchers can study the vipers further. I will also take a piece of the skin and craft a nice belt for you. To complete this assignment, you need to review your lesson notes. Find the speedwalk to the forest of Lignesh, make your way there, and find the vipers. Feel free to explore the forest while you are there, but reminder to consider other creatures before attacking them, some may be much bigger than you. When you have found a viper skin, please return here and hand it to me. Good luck. We are counting on you. East. Help Daily Blessing. So basically it's a gift from Ardwolf, is that right? That's right. You can ask for Daily Blessing every 23 hours. Cool, let's try it. Daily Blessing. Wow, double experience and quest points. Free wisdom and also bonus trains for leveling. To go to recall from Commander Dar go east and a few south until you find the recruiter then go south and down. We are now at recall. From here you can use the Ranto command. Let's run to forest or run to lead Nesh or run to lead. Here we are at the forest of Lidnesh. Let's go north and look for vipers. North. Scan. I can see a few vipers to the east and west. Let's get them. East. Kill viper. You should generally consider the opponent before attacking. Anyway, the viper was small maybe level 3 or less. You have reached level 2. You gained mana, hit points, practices, trains, moves and you can now use axe. Kill Viper. West. West. Skin Viper. North. Kill Viper. Kill Viper. Kill Viper. You have found the Viper skin. You have also gained a level and you're now level 3 with more hit points plus more mana. Time to head back to Commander Dar. Recall. From Recall you go up then 7 north and then west to find Commander Dar. Welcome back. I see you were able to find a Viper skin. Please give it to me to complete your assignment. Use the command Give Viper Dar to give the skin to me. Give Viper Dar. Thank you. Studying this will help us find a way to cure the overpopulation of vipers in Lidnesh. Here is the gold and the belt I promised you. Type next when you are ready to receive instructions for your next lesson. I just saw laser tag promotion. What's that? It's a fun game on the side and gives you a chance to earn quest points. Next. Well done. You have now completed hunting and combat training. While hunting in the wild you will lose hit points and consume spell points movement points. You may even die from time to time. Your next lesson is in the Academy Clinic 2 East from here where your healer nurse Orkron will cover regeneration and what to do if you die. We will let our warrior do the rest of the lessons and graduate with a nice reward. In regard to healing you can sleep or quaff potions or cast spells. You don't die from hunger or thirst but you will heal slower when hungry and or thirsty. There are plenty of shops that sell food and drinks. There are fountains that fill hunger and thirst. In regard to equipment, there are worn, held and wielded equipment. To view worn equipment type EQ, to view your inventory type INV. Ardwolf gives you a weapon to start with, for a warrior it is a sword. Other classes have different starting weapons. Many clan shops around Recall have good equipment. There are permanent lights that can be handy for nighttime or dark rooms.
In economics, the currency in Ardwolf is gold. You can make money by questing, selling, doing campaigns, looting slain mobs or auctioning. There is an auction system where players can trade without being physically in the room together. You can lose money by buying, having it stolen or by gambling. In the geography classroom you will learn about the five continents on Ardwolf and the many different areas to explore and gain levels. There is also a nice reward. It is a portal to the academy entrance. There are also lessons in communication, clan life, questing, and more. It is likely that you will need quest points eventually. Let us move on to the number 3 ranked mod. Discworld Mud is based on the Discworld book series by Terry Pratchett. Mud name. Discworld. Theme. Terry Pratchett's Discworld. World size. Gigantic. More than 1 million rooms. Player killing. Restricted player killing. Let's go to the website. Discworld Mud is a multiplayer, text-based, online game, a MUD, or text MMORPG, based on the Discworld books by Terry Pratchett. On Discworld you will meet many of the characters from those books. Terry's books are humorous fantasy and the game retains the comical, fun feel of the books. Feel free to browse the website. Let's get started. We'll give you guidance on the basics of the MUD throughout this video. I'm going to copy the MUD address and paste it into Notepad then into Mush Client. Discworld.starturtle.net Start Mush Client Go to File, New World Put in Discworld as the MAD name. In the address put in discworld.starturtle.net. You can use port 23 or port 4242. Click the option Save on Exit and click OK. Maximize the screen and press the letter N to make a new character. Put in your character name, please ensure to check the advice on naming your character. You have chosen the name Tanko T. Is this correct? Yes. Put in your password and confirm. Ensure to read the advice on passwords. Just press enter when Discworld Mud asks how would you like your name capitalized. Choose your character's gender. Please note you need to be female to join the Witch's Guild. Are you using a screen reader? No. To play on Discworld you must agree to the following terms and conditions. Profanity is not allowed on public channels. Harassment of any kind including sexual and racial is grounds for immediate banishment. Use of robot script or triggers is not permitted. You may not have more than one character logged in at once. Bugs must be reported. Abuse of bugs if often grounds for banishment. Giving out quest spoilers in public is not permitted. It is your responsibility to read, understand and adhere to the rules as given in the help rules. By typing yes you signify that you have read understand and agree to be bound by these terms and conditions. Yes. As you swim into existence, floating in space, you see great Artuin, the star turtle. He, or as the case may be, she, paddles slowly through the cosmos with four giant elephants standing on his or her shell. On their backs, the disk of the world revolves, glittering under the light of its sun. On the Discworld you see giant landscapes, mountain ranges, oceans, forests and even cities. And at the rim, an endless waterfall flows into space, creating a stunning rainbow of colors. 
you begin to notice that the world is steadily getting bigger. Or are you just moving towards it? You are falling at high speed toward a small village. A large pile of pumpkins is directly below you, that should break your fall. Squelch. You pass out. A farmer says. I dragged you here to keep you safe, friend. Welcome to Pumpkin Town. Once you regain consciousness, you'll find yourself in a comfortable hut with exit south to go to the newbie park and climb through window to go to Pumpkin Village. Read sign. The welcoming sign informs that there is an introduction to teach you the most important things you need to know about playing. If you already know how mudding works, you can climb through window. It is recommended that you go through the rooms in Pumpkin Village. One of the most important parts is the Guild Grove where you can learn about different guilds such as warriors, witches, priests, wizards, thieves and assassins. You will also gain some skill points for the relevant guild if you complete the task for the non-player character aka NPC. Help here. Tutorial Most if not all rooms in the newbie area have the option of help here and tutorial for additional information and guidance. There is an option on mush client to keep command on the typing line if you want to repeat commands. South. Sit on bench. The bench says, Oi, what are you doing sitting around for? The bench seems to be looking consideringly at you. That is really quite impressive for a bench. Please feel free to sit for a while and listen to the bench. If you already know how to move and look around you can head west. Map West Hi. My name is Gabriella, but everyone just calls me Gabby. Everyone says I talk too much. Hi. I love talking though. Everyone here is so friendly. You can talk to anyone. Just say what it is you want to communicate. Hello. Try it. Say hello. Hello there, you must be new. I remember most people I speak to and I speak to everyone. You can talk to people too. Saying, is a good way to talk to people out here. Everyone in the room can hear it and so they can respond. Sometimes though, it's nice to make it clear what person you're talking to, and to do that you can use say to. Why don't you try it? Tell me your name using say to. Say to Gabriella my name is Tanko T. Excellent, now we can talk more privately. Though if we really wanted to be quiet, we could just whisper. If you want to know more, why not whisper yes to me? Say to Gabriella yes. Whisper Gabriella yes. You're really getting the hang of this aren't you? I like whispering because it's totally private, you can tell secrets this way and no one else can hear them. Other people in the room can still see that something is whispered though. To communicate with any player anywhere on the disc world without others seeing it, you can use the tell command. Of course the player will have to be logged in and not blocking tells in any way. It only works on players not on non-player characters, usually called NPCs. That's people like me. So you can't try to send me a tell. Gabriella Prattle looks sad. To use tells, for example, tell Pit life is beautiful. But that will only work if Pit is online. Anyway, you've been doing great. You'll be communicating with people in no time. Gabriela Prato smiles. To continue on the introduction, just go north from here. North.
read sign. Some final things you should really know about are listed here. It is not necessary to eat or drink on Discworld. If you see no color on this line, type term X term 256. Don't type that if you do see the color. If doing that breaks this color, type term ANSI instead. If you want to log out, type quit don't just close your client. To see useful information about yourself, type score. To see your inventory, type inventory or just I. A lot more useful commands are listed in Help Essentials. If you are lost, you can use Godmother Help. If you don't play for a long time, 60 times your character's age, or 10 days if that's more, your character will get deleted. To avoid this, simply log in for even a minute before that time. To end the introduction, simply take the out exit. Out. You are being moved to the town square of Pumpkin Town, the newbie area of Discworld Mud. To go out of the newbie area and into the real world, just go west. If you want a bit more preparation, buy weapons, train combat, earn some startup skills and perhaps learn more, you can explore the village. You have been given a guide and map to help you with that. Typing look guide will give you some pointers on how to read it. Also reminder that help here will usually tell you how to use a room. While in Pumpkin Town, you can always redo the introduction. Use Godmother to get back to the help hut. If you have more problems, you can ask for help in the newbie channel. For example, newbie I'm having trouble with. We will guide you through Pumpkin Town and run through the basics and important parts. When you have your own character feel free to explore the area and use the visitor's guide. Look map. We're currently at town square represented by the at symbol and highlighted in yellow. We're going to cover the rooms that Tanko T believes are the most important. The room highlighted in red represented by the letter G is the Guild Grove. This is where we learn about the different guilds on Discworld mud such as warriors, thieves, witches, assassins, priests and wizards. The room highlighted in yellow represented by the letter N is the Night Club. This room will teach you about darkness and how to make lights. You can ask for up to three torches. These can be sold at the shop for a small amount of money. The rooms highlighted in orange, represented by the letters W and Y, are to teach you about water and guidance on what to do when you are lost. The room highlighted in green represented by the letter R is to teach you about search. This is a very important command. As a newbie you may want to search the streets in the city to find good items to sell and there may be really good items that you want to keep. There may be quests that require searching. The quest room is right next door represented by the letter Q. Highlighted in blue and represented by the letter S are the shops. This is where you will learn about buying and selling. You will also learn about weapons, thama, and other items. The area highlighted in pink and represented by the letter H is the hospital. This is where you learn about healing and upstairs you learn about crafting. Let's go to the Guild Grove. Just east and then southeast from the town square. Can we please learn about warriors? Yes, certainly. Warriors. Hello, Tankati. Looks like you could do with some tips on how to fight. You could try out the pumpkin training dummy in the training room at the southwest corner of the square, or I could teach you a few things. Are you interested? Yes. Well then, Tanky T. I'm going to tell you about four special abilities that all warriors are taught when they've learned enough about fighting. Any warrior worth his salt uses a war cry. A war cry serves to intimidate your enemy, often to the point where they are unable to fight as effectively. It doesn't really matter what you say either, as long as it startles your opponent. Of course, traditional war cries like prepare to die or eat cold steel are always good. Give it a go then, Tanky T. War cry arg. Not bad at all. If you become a warrior, you'll learn more about intimidating your enemies. When using piercing swords or weapons like the wooden spear, which is available in the weapons and armor shop here, it's possible to impale your opponent. This special combat maneuver does much more damage than regular combat, but takes a bit of skill to pull off. If you're worried about the money for buying a spear, you can sell it to the general store afterwards. 
they'll give you most of what it's worth, although you'll still lose a bit. Try it out on me, Tanky T, don't worry, I won't hurt you. Let's go to the shop and buy a wooden spear, west then northwest then north then east. List. This is the general store. You can buy and sell items here. There doesn't appear to be any wooden spears here. Let's go upstairs to the weapons and armor shop. A new adventurer starts with eight pumpkin dollars. Buy spear. Wield spear. I. Wow, the spear is one-handed. Yep it is, you can use your other hand to hold a shield or wield a second weapon. That is awesome. I'm going to practice spear on the pumpkin to get a few skill points. The pumpkin is west-south-west-south from the general store. You should generally consider the opponent before attacking. Anyway, the pumpkin does not hit hard and there is a hospital nearby to heal. Attack pumpkin. Health Pumpkin. The pumpkin is in good shape. North. Looks like you gained a few skill points from fighting the pumpkin and you're going off to heal, is that right? You got it. Nurse Vicky will bandage you and you will heal much faster than normal. The hospital is north, east, south from the pumpkin. Seems like you can only gain up to three skill points from the pumpkin. I can see your polearm, parry, and dodge all at three. You can gain more from the pumpkin, but it can take much longer than the first three. North. Southeast. Warriors. Impale head crusher with spear. Not bad. You've got the action right. If you become a warrior, you'll learn a lot more about impaling. If you have a slicing weapon like the jagged bone sword that is sold in the weapon and armor shop, you can try to behead your enemy. This takes a lot of skill, but if it's a killing blow, his head will come clean off. Now that sends a message in my opinion. Remember, you can just sell back unnecessary weapons to the general store below the weapon shop. Try to behead me, Tanky T, you won't hit me, of course, but it will be good practice. West. Northwest. North. East. Sell spear. Up. List. Please note you can use the letter in front of the item to buy. Instead of buying jagged bone sword, for example, you can buy R. By R. Wield sword. Down. I. Looks like you need both hands to wield the jagged bone sword. West. South. West. South. Health Pumpkin. The pumpkin is in good shape. Attack Pumpkin. Let us attempt to gain three skill points in fighting melee heavy sword and then move on. Health Pumpkin. The pumpkin is in good shape. Health Pumpkin. The pumpkin is in good shape. North. I. B skills. East. 
Southeast. Warriors. Ready to try beheading the Antanky T? Give it a go. Behead Head Crusher with Sword. Not bad. You got the swinging movement right. If you become a warrior, you'll learn more about beheading. If you have a smashing weapon, like the mace that is sold in the Pumpkin Town weapon shop, you can crush your enemy with it. Why don't you give it a shot with me, Tanka T? I won't hurt you. West. I am going to do a sneaky trick. What's the sneaky trick? I'm going to learn more about thieves and steal the mace. Sounds like a plan. But won't you get caught and go to jail? We'll see what happens. Thieves. All I did was try to shoplift a couple of rings from a shop, and suddenly it's like I'm a common criminal in Ohulan Kutash. Ah, oh, Tanko T, I have a job for you. It will help you decide whether you're suited to a life of thievery. Are you interested? Yes. Thieves have a number of methods of stealing, snatch, filch, steal and shoplift. It is this last method you will practice today. I would like you to go to any shop in Pumpkin Town, shoplift something and give it to me. There are two shops just northwest and a little north of the Guild Grove. Southwest. Northwest. North. East. Unhold sword. Sell sword. Up. List. Shop lift F. You steal the iron mace from the weapons and armor shop. Down. Wield mace. West. South. West. South. I. Attack pumpkin. Tactics. Health pumpkin. The pumpkin is in good shape. North. Skills. Skills fighting. Seems like there are many more fighting skills you can gain from fighting the pumpkin. That's right, such as block and usage of other weapons. East. Southeast. I. Warriors. Ready to try crushing then, Tanka T? Give it a go. Crush Head Crusher with Mace. Not bad at all, Tanka T. You could make a fine warrior. I can tell you more about becoming one if you like where you could try out your new skills in the combat crib. Skills Fighting Wow, looks like you got plus 5 to all fighting skills and there are some plus 8 bonuses because you gained some points from the pumpkin. You got it. Let's finish the job for Shifty Marlow and gain some skill points. West I Thieves Unhold Mace Hello again Tanko T. I hope your attempt at shoplifting something for me went well. Give mace to Marlowe. You should consider joining the Thieves Guild when you leave Pumpkin Town. Skills.
I see you got five points to covert skills. There's hiding, lock pick and more. You got it. We're gonna move on and learn about the wizards. Southwest. Wizards. Ah. Tanko T. Excellent. I'm in a spot of bother at the moment. I seem to have misplaced a very important scroll and I simply don't have the time to leave here to find it. Do you think you could help me? Yes. Capital. I must have lost it somewhere in Pumpkin Town while I was going for my daily constitutional. Unfortunately, it is invisible to the naked eye. I will cast a spell on you so you can see it. Hold still. Let there be sight. All set. Pay close attention as you explore Pumpkin Town and you'll be sure to find it. You will need to capture the scroll rather than getting it through normal means. Good luck. We will need to explore Pumpkin Town to find the scroll. It will be highlighted. Look. North. Northwest. Look. South. Up. Down. North. West. South. Down. Up. North. West. East. North. You notice a strange looking scroll on the ground here. Capture scroll. Hello. South. East. Southeast. Wizards. Hello, again, Tanko T. I do hope you've had some luck with finding the scroll. Give scroll to Alfred. You found my scroll. With tenacity like that you'd make a fine wizard. Looks like you got five points to magic skills. Yes. I'm ready to move on to the main disc world. Let us go to the travel agency. What about other guilds like witches, assassins, and priests? I've completed the tasks required and gained skill points. That won't be shown in this video. I'm interested in becoming a warrior. Before we go, I have a question. How do I change alignment? You can change alignment by going to the priest's room in the guild grove. Rescue beetle to become a better person or drown beetle to become more evil. North. Northwest. West. West. I'm just going to quickly buy a mace from the shop. I feel bad for stealing. Buy P. You buy the iron mace? Tanko T, do you realize this is just a game and there are lots of players who are in the Thieves' Guild? Understood, but I'd like to be of good character where I can. If you are worried about the shop going broke that is unlikely. They're going to have lots of newbies ongoing especially when this video hits the internet. Can you please show us the best starting locations? Certainly. We're going to use internet resources, it will be much quicker than trying to get info here on the mud. I'm going to Google search, which nation should I enter Discworld mud? The current list of available start nations is Hohendaland, Jalibibi, Moorpork, Lanka, Afib, Clatch, Agatea, Omnia, Brindisi, Istanzia, Uberwald, Dereg, Sort, and Genoa. Let's learn more about Jalibibi. The capital of Jalibibi, also called Jalibibi, was the seat of power for the ruling pharaohs, whilst to the north the huge pyramids of the necropolis line the boundary between land and sky. Jilian characters begin the game with Jilian currency and speaking Jilian. Many religions are present in Jalibibi, and those wishing to join the priesthood of Het, the vulture-headed god of unexpected guests, will find their main temple here. Most other playable priesthoods also have a smaller presence here, the one exception being Pish. 
As well as joining the priesthood, adventurers may join the Gelian Guard, a warrior specialization in Jelababi. Not far from the city can also be found outposts of the Hashishim, an assassin specialization, and the Klachian Foreign Legion, a warrior specialization. Whilst facilities currently exist in Jelababi for thieves, witches, and wizards, those wishing to play these guilds are advised to choose another start location. To start here, just type, choose Jelababi Jelababi and press enter. Then enter door. Warning. Starting in Jelababi is of moderate difficulty. Whilst it is not equipped with every facility you might need, it is by no means the hardest place that a new player could start in. Please be aware that the killing of cats, priests and shopkeepers is forbidden in Jilibaby. Consequences for breaking these local taboos could result in you being thrown to the deadly crocodiles. Stealing is also forbidden, and will result in you being tossed into the surrounding terrains when caught. I'm interested in Ankhmore Pork. Ankhmore Pork is the largest city on the disc, and quite possibly offers the greatest number of services. It is probably the easiest place for people to begin their existence, if one of the dirtiest. There is little danger to be found in the city, and it is easy to avoid. Newcomers should stay far away from the shades, located in the west end of the city of Cockbill Street, and wandering on the solid parts of the river is also not recommended. Many guilds flourish in Ankh-Morpork, including the Wizards Guild on Satter Square, the Assassin's Guild on Filigree Street, and the Thieves' Guild on the Street of Alchemists. Wannabe warriors can join the Ankh-Morpork Palace Guard at the Patrician's Palace or the Weapon Master's Court on Vagabond Street, and priests can join up at various temples throughout the city, mostly located on Street of Small Gods. While witches cannot be trained in Ankh-Morpork, they can visit Jenny Applebottom on Holofernes Street to get a magical talisman to teleport them to Granny Weatherwax's cottage in Badass. Local laws tend to be quite relaxed in Ankh-Morpork. Thieves may steal if they are licensed and not on leave, though anyone else is likely to quickly regret any thefts they initiate. Assassins, also, may inhume guild-sanctioned targets once they are certified. Killing people is generally accepted, though the Ankh-Morpork City Watch will arrest anyone caught in the act, possibly after a nice beating. Characters from Ankh-Morpork begin the game with Morporkian currency and speaking Morporkian. To start here just choose Morpork Ankh-Morpork and then enter door. Ankh-Morpork is a very good start place for new players. Please tell us about a dangerous location where newbies should not start. One of the largest towns in Uberwald, Escro is a pleasant, sleepy town with most of the comforts of home and none of the hassles. Sounds perfect, right? Unfortunately vampires and werewolves think so as well. Although adventurers will start in a pub unplagued by vampires, the rest of the town belongs to the undead all night. Furthermore, the roads and forests surrounding Escrow are similarly deadly, hence it is highly recommended that adventurers not venture here, unless they wish to feed themselves to the locals. To join any guilds, or keep breathing, for that matter, Adventurers should take the first carriage out of town that they can get on. Despite the town folk's willingness to live near werewolves and vampires, they are not very tolerant of being killed by adventurers. Those from the town of Escrow start out with Lancrastian money and knowledge of the Uberwaldine language. Warning. Danger. This is an insanely dangerous location for newbies. Do not start here unless you are an experienced player seeking a challenge. When you die here you will not have lives, inventories, experience replaced. If you want to die here, I mean, start here, choose Uberwald Escrow. So which mud did you guys like best? I thought Akia was interesting. We had to fight for our life within the first few minutes as a newbie. Ardwolf feels newbie friendly and I like the academy. My favorite mod was Discworld. Looking forward to enter the main game.